Hey, it's Smithy from Soccer M, back on the one and only Spurred On. And my video today is a bit different because it's fair to say I used to have a few rascal Barnets back in the day. No doubt the producer Barnaby is putting some photos of what I used to look like right now. Thanks for that. Anyway, moving on. It got me thinking, what are my top 10 most rascal Tottenham Hotspur Barnets of all time? And before we start, Adi Bayor's gold bird nest does not make the cut because it looks ridiculous. In at number 10 is Danny Rose when he decided to dye his skinhead red. I don't know if you remember this, but it created a bit of a wow factor when he stepped onto the pitch for the first time. Now, the reason this is in my list is not because he dyed his hair red, because let's face it, dreadful choice of colour. It reminds us of Arsenal, which no one wants playing for Tottenham Hotspur. It is because of how quickly he got rid of the red haircut once he realised people didn't like it. Danny Rose, fair play yeah. My ninth favourite Tottenham Hotspur rascal Barnet of all time is, of course, Benoit Astuacotto's massive afro. I love this guy. He used to travel on the tube. He used to always tweet about going to Nando's. He just seemed like quite a cool, laid-back sort of geezer, the kind of guy that forgot to get his hair cut. And that's exactly what it looked like when he came out and his, his afro was absolutely gigantic. He did play left-back for a lot of years, a lot more years than people remember, and he makes my cut as number nine. Number eight is Ian Walker. Uh, Ian Walker, not only was he famous for wearing the most ridiculous multicolored Tottenham Hotspur goalkeeping kits we've ever had, but he had uh, these sort of slick back curtains. I've never seen anyone, I mean, uh, maybe me, uh, that wears so much gel in their hair. Yeah, I know people say I wear too much whack, but he wore so much gel and wax and product in his hair, so much so that he used to fling himself about all over the place and his hair never moved. Massive respect, Ian Walker is my number eight. My seventh Tottenham Hotspur rascal Barnet goes to Aaron Lennon. And this was because a lot of work went into this. He had the little tram lines in his eyebrows, but then he matched them up and aligned them to tram lines in his hair. So if you looked at it from the side, you just saw tram lines that extended from his eyebrows into his hair. Now, it made me think, it, a lot of thought must have gone into that when he went to the hairdressers. And I've seen people with tram lines in their eyebrows, and I've seen people with tram lines in their hair, but never both at the same time. Lennon is number seven. Number six goes to my mate Sandro uh, for an unbelievable piece of hair work, if you can call it that. Uh, he had a sort of, I don't know how to describe this, like a half Mohican parrot and then a sort of half blue shaved head at the side. So it was a bit of both really. It's for some reason he thought, yeah, let's shave the side of my heads and spray, well not spray paint them, but dye them blue. Uh, and then have a tuff on the hair that isn't dyed blue at the top. So it just looked completely random. And I think the reason he did that, putting blue in his hair, is because he loved playing for Tottenham at the time so much. He wanted to get some Tottenham loving in his haircut. Uh, I remember when everyone saw him for the first time, they clapped him, sung his name, Sandro Water Barnet. The fifth most rascal Tottenham Hotspur Barnet of all time goes to Jermaine Defoe when he did, let's be honest, let's call it the Cisco look. I don't know if you remember the R&B rapper Cisco. He had a sort of bleach blonde peroxide skinhead and Jermaine Defoe decided to copy it. No idea why. Not something I'd go for myself. You could say he went to the hairdressers and the hairdresser got it wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, but anyway, as if that wasn't bad enough, he then later on decided to do something else with his hair and he had a sort of one singular tram line that went all the way across the side of his head. So Jermaine Defoe, with two haircuts, makes it in at number five for me. Number four for me, Paul Gascoigne, 1991 FA Cup semi-final against Arsenal. That famous photo of him after he just scored the free kick with a sort of step haircut, which only he could get away with. He looked so hard, he looked mustard, and it was my favourite Tottenham Hotspur moment of all time. And I loved his haircut. Gazza, legend, number four. Number three for me is David Ginola, uh, mainly because I used to rock the curtain look that he, he had. And a lot of my mates had curtains as well back in the days. They were quite in in 1990s. At least that's what I tell myself when I look back at photos of me in the 1990s. But everyone who had curtains got hammered for having curtains, especially if they were long. David Ginola, I genuinely think, is one of the only men in the world that got away with it. And no one ever spoke ill about the fact that he had long, flowing locks and curtain haircut because he looked absolute say magnifique. And also, there's a very famous photo of Ginola signing for Spurs. Now, when someone signs for the club, you either stand there in your normal clothes, your civvies, and you hold the shirt. Or, you stand there in the club shirt, and you pose for a photo. Not David Ginola. He stood there, holding the Spurs shirt, topless. Why was he topless? No one questions why he was topless, because he's so beautiful, and he had such great hair. Ginola, Tottenham, legend number three. Number two goes to Ralph Coates. Who's Ralph Coates, says the youngsters watching this. Chill out, I'm about to tell you who Ralph Coates is if you don't know who he is. And if you don't know who he is, you should know who he is. He scored the winning goal in the League Cup final for us back in 1973. And if you haven't seen it, what a barnet he had, by the way. He had a haircut, I'll call it the comb over, where when he went one way and then he flopped it over, it looked like a completely different haircut from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. It was magnificent, fantastic barnet. I loved it and it's my number two. 
my number one most rascal Tottenham Hotspur Barnet of all time. It's not Barnaby from Spurred on TV, although he pushes in very close. It is, of course, Christopher Waddle for the best mullet football has ever seen. And what I love is that a lot of people had mullets at that time, but I think he rocked it better than anyone else. I'm going to put it out there and say that because he was a nippy, quick, fantastic, technically gifted player. And every time you see him running forward, running down the line, down the pitch, you just see this waddle-like wad of hair just flowing, these locks flowing. And it was a fantastic barnet. It's a real shame now that no footballer, ex-footballer or ex-manager still rocks the mullet. Do they, Jerry Francis? Chrissy Waddle, you're my number one. So they were my top 10 Tottenham Hotspur rascal barnets of all time. And take rascal as you want. Is it good? Is it bad? Let me know what you think was your favourite barnet of the lot and what was your worst. And if there's any I've missed out, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and check out at Spurred on TV on Twitter. And for more great content, check out Soccer M's YouTube channel. Laters! Now this week, the topics we're talking about are Harry Kane's pursuit of the golden boot, Harry Kane's new boxing career and UFC career, Dyer saying that we cannot get tired and we don't need to get tired, uh, the Dortmund fans being impressive, Sunes saying that Spurs have a huge advantage over Leicester because we're young, and Eriksen saying that he's been texting Schmeichel and winding him up about the title race.